All right, so we left it off where we had our username and password in this form. And if we type in the wrong password, it'll give us the validation error of invalid password. If we type in the wrong user, it'll say, are you sure you're registered? And then of course, if the one of the fields is empty, it will say that field is required. Uh, these validators are nice because they allow us to ensure that the form is working properly and it does a lot of the legwork for us. So then when we get to our view, we don't have to do as much, right? So in this case, we just did two more things after that, assuming the form is valid. Now the form is valid is basically saying, um, let's make sure that this user exists and let's make sure that their password is correct. So it's already checking their password. It does check it kind of twice here, um, but it's at least it's being redundant in a good way. Uh, and this is also authenticating the user, making sure that they can also log in because there's the other side of it is, um, or that they, they have access, they have the correct privileges to log in. Because uh, if they don't, then it will be the correct password. However, it, authenticate will fail, uh, which we'll worry about that some other time. And now uh, what we want to do is create a registration form, just a basic user registration form. We've made the login form so far. Um, now we're just going to go ahead and create a registration form. And this registration form is going to be similar to what we did before with the login form. It's only going to be a little bit different because it's going to be inheriting from a model form. I did mention it before, but now we're actually going to do it. So underneath login form inside of our accounts app in forms.py, we're going to go in class and we're going to call it registration form. I'm going to add some spaces here so we can see it better. All right, so class registration form, registration form, and we're gonna call it forms.modelform. And since it's inheriting, since it's a model form class, we need to use a model for that. So we're gonna use the user model, so class meta model equals to user. And now we have to say, the actual fields that we want uh, for this user. Well, there's multiple fields that are gonna be in there, but we're only gonna focus on two fields specifically. And those are gonna be fields are gonna be, first off, user and email. Uh, so these are the user field and the email field. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the fields that might possibly be used by going into the admin. First off, I'm gonna log in. And it says unknown unspecified field. Oops, I said user when that should say username. Otherwise, it's gonna run that error still. Okay, I logged in again. No errors this time, and I've logged in by it saying logged in. Okay, then we go into accounts. Let's check out our admin, and we go into our user accounts. So essentially, what we're gonna be doing is making users like this. So here's the different fields that we could have. We could have username, password, first name, last name, and email address. Um, I'm going to leave out first name, last name, but you could add it here if you wanted into the fields. And we could also add password field, but I want my password field to be a little bit smarter. And I also want a password confirmation field, right? So I want two password fields actually. And one is the actual password. The other one is the password confirmation. Um, so now let's actually write those in. So password, in fact, we could copy the one from up here and then paste it a couple times. So I'm gonna put password one and password two um, because they are different. Uh, they're different fields, but they're gonna be checking against each other. Hopefully you kind of already have an idea of what we might be doing to check these against each other. If you don't, that's okay. Um, and then we say label equals to password because we don't want it to say password one, we want it to say password. So this is how you would write or change the label that comes through. Um, so if we look at our labels here these are the labels that it's referring to um, all right so label one and password confirmation would be label two and if you use this slash we can put it onto a new line so it's just uh, it's not going over to the side too much depending on how big your monitor is and stuff like that and then follow along with um, kind of standard format called pep8 to make sure that the lines aren't too long we could probably even do it up here uh, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about that. Anyways, okay. So now we've got password one and password two. 
So let's let's actually take a look at this form now. Um, let's actually render it so we can see it. Um, what I'm going to do now is our login view. I'm just going to copy the login view to be almost exactly like what we what we're going to do, but this time we're going to call it uh, register view or maybe registration view. Better yet, so registration view, and we also want to uh, bring in our registration form. So like what we created here, our registration form. So I just imported that and now our form will be login. Instead of login form, it's gonna be registration form and we'll worry about the is valid stuff later. So I'm gonna do command slash and comment these things out and then also comment out the line of, or well, actually we want that line. Okay, so notice that I did not change the template. I'm using the same form template and that's because we're using a form. So the form template works just fine for us here. Um, all right, so now we need to create a URL for this registration view. And all we're gonna do here is URL R, big caret, and then accounts register, dollar sign, quote, comma, and then accounts.views.registration uh, view and name equals to auth register come at the end great so now we have our registration URL set up we can actually go there let's take a look and we've got an invalid syntax on line 25 up oh, I put a period there when it should be a comma notice that a lot of times it will tell you what the errors are and also if you uh, sometimes if you scroll down it will also show you some more about the error uh, depending on where you are but in this case it shows me right here and then it also says what line it is which is important for you know figuring out our own stuff but sometimes the error will actually show up down here however in this case it did not okay so now we've got this auth register and let's refresh in here uh, on expected an indented block so another error as far as the lines go on form or let's see no it said views line 36 so views and then line 36, uh, that's because of this. We're gonna say print is valid. Now, of course, when you have an if statement, you have to have something indented here. So in that case, I just made a print statement. All right, great, so now it shows it. Uh, notice that it says we now have our username, email, password, and password confirmation. Uh, so notice these two inputs that we added. We added those into our form right here. So those were added to the bottom of the fields, right? So if we wanted to change the fields order, we could do it like that. And that will put the email field on top. Let's just restart the server here. And that moves the email address on top. Okay, but I wanna leave it as username email. All right, so there we go. Now we've got our username, we've got our email address, password and password confirmation. Okay, so now thinking back to what we did with clean username and clean password, we want to actually create validation error for these passwords. So realistically, we wanna have it where these passwords are the same, right? So they're actually gonna check these passwords. However, we don't need to check both of the passwords. We really just need to check one of them to make sure that the other one is the same. Right, so if they're not the same, then we run into an error. If they are the same, then we don't run into an error. So all I'm gonna do here is underneath class meta, just enter a couple times, def clean password. And I'm putting it on, I'm gonna put it on password two because password two is the second one. So you would assume that the first time they enter it would be the right one. And then the second time would be the wrong one. Either way, the second one is gonna be the last one they fill out, so that's ideal for where it's incorrect. So again, it's taking in self, and then password one is equal to self.cleaned uh, clean data.get password one, and I'm just gonna copy this line and oops, paste it underneath here, put password two, password two, and then we're gonna do if password one and password two. So basically if these are not none and password 
one is not equal to password two, then we just raise our validation error. Raise forms.validation error, passwords do not match. And then otherwise we'll return uh, password two. Right, so we don't need else, we don't need an else clause in here. You could put one, but that's really not necessary because it's gonna run through this. If, th if this is true at all, then it's gonna raise that. So it's not gonna continue down. All right, so I'm just gonna leave out the return. There we go. Okay, so now we can actually check this. So let's go back into our, if I go to submit, it says field required, new username, email, at email, password one, two, three, password one, two, three, four, hit submit, passwords do not match, enter a valid email address. So these are the validation errors. Uh, so password do, passwords do not match works. That's works just fine um, as we would want it to work. So um, another thing that we might consider doing is making our email field required. Because if we look back at it, let's just reload this page here. Um, if I hit submit, it says this field's required. It's referring to the username field. This field's required, referring to the password field, and this field's required, referring to the password confirmation field. So we actually don't require an email address, and this is probably not a good thing. We probably actually do want to require an email address because we want to have a way to get in touch with them, uh, especially on an e-commerce site, right? If they're going to be signing up, a username might not be as important but an email is very important. That's something we definitely, definitely need. Um, and we only want to have one email per user probably too. So this is also where we would do something with our email. Um, we're gonna come back to that here in just a second. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as an empty thing and jump into the next part of it, which is saving the actual model. Um, so let's actually think about this for a second. I'm gonna go into the admin and log in and then I'm going to go into my user accounts go in here as a username and let's say for instance I write Justin here um, and if I go to save it stuff actually happens here or can happen here so this is a form just like what we see elsewhere so this is a form being rendered and it has its own validation so like if I deleted this and went to go hit save it's going to still say hey it needs to be an email address right so Let's do that and then hit save. And then again, it says enter valid email address. So th it's still having these validation errors just like we did we saw on something that we just created. Um, but what happens when we go to save, it is a method called save, right? So um, we can actually override that method. So let's, let's just kind of talk about this for a second. We'll go define save and it's gonna be self commit equaling to true. So when it's saving, it's going to save this user into our account. So we want to do user equals to super registration form self save. And then we'll say commit equals to false. And we'll do user dot set password. And we'll do self dot cleaned data. And we'll call it password. Could be one or two. It doesn't really matter. And but I'm going to go off of password one because again, that's the first one they enter. And then if commit user.save and then um, return user. All right, so what's happening here is once they hit save, once they say save, then it's going to do all this stuff. We're going to do some more stuff with commit in just a moment, but basically, once we say commit being true, um, then the user will actually save with this new set password. Okay, so now that we have this, we actually wanna go one step further and actually create the user. So going back into our view, we see form is valid. So I could say new user equals to form.save and we do commit equals to false, right? So this is saying, this is not gonna run this yet because commit is false, or at least it's not gonna run this part yet, I should say, because commit is false. So now I could say new user dot first name equals to Justin. Okay, so notice this is not in our form. I'm just manually doing it. 
And the reason I'm showing you this is not so much of the registration form, but it's more has more to do with model form and how model form works. It does work for a registration form in this case because we do have a field called first name, as we saw um, here, right? So that's the field first name. And it's going to basically set this exactly just like that. All right. So now after we do that, we go new user dot save. And what this is going to do is it's actually running the form save um, and then the instance of the form, I should say, save. And then it's going to run this right here. And this is where it's going to actually set the password. Notice we did not set it here at all. We did not set the email here at all. We didn't set anything other than first name here. That's all we've done on our view, but then on our form, it handles everything else. All right, so let's actually see what, what happens when we do that. So let's go to accounts register. 